Hello, survivors. Welcome to the State of Decay 2 stream. How was your weekend? Uh, did you learn anything fun? Like, for instance... Uh, well, speaking of weapons, we got Mark Lautenbach here. <laughs> I'm a weapon. He is a weapon. He makes crazy weapons, and I just get to watch. Uh, but he's going to be giving us a tour of the heavy weapons, which is a brand new type of weapon that's being added to State of Decay 2 in the Juggernaut Edition. Uh, we've also got Brant Fitzgerald here. As usual. He also makes weapons, and uh, so he's going to be the one who's driving. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, we should actually start right at the beginning, which is we have got a dev diary that sort of explores uh, sort of the, the motivation and the story behind us adding heavy weapons to the game. So why don't we start by watching that? Uh, you guys want to put your headphones on? Put your headphones cool. on. Let's start by watching that together, mm -hmm. and then we'll move on to playing the game. So let's see here. I think I've kept I it. I apologize for my goofy noggin. What goofy noggin? That one? No, oh, yeah, the one that you're one. about to see. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, he's it's right at the beginning. Fault, right? Yeah. Blame God. We love adding new guns and things, but that doesn't change the paradigm, right? This this is gonna be a game changer on how people approach uh, different zombie situations. You just see like things in the garage, things in a hardware store, and uh, then you see movies, and you have a bunch of ideas in your head. So when I was cleaning up my grandpa's garage, I found this giant thing. I didn't know what it was, big stick, big cleaver blade on the end. So I just looked up cleaver with big handle. Hog splitter was the thing that it turned out to be. We've learned a lot of things over the past year and a half or so about where we can optimize and, and where we can buy back some memory. And that includes not just making the weapons, but also um, a new fighting style. Um, a lot of new animations, new reactions from the zombies, which is really cool. And it just feels so badass. For instance, uh, came up with a, a big shovel, and my first thought was like, audio is going to have a field day with this big shovel and the bong it's going to hit uh, when you're smacking people. So that was, like, got to put that in there. As a sound designer, that's a big part of the the job is to help sell an emotional moment. Something can feel more dangerous than, and more impactful or even more heavy than something else. We went down to Warner Brothers Foley Studio in, in Burbank and directed the Foley artists to just bang on all the cool props that they had down there. And they will have a pile of things that, that are stacked up and then start hitting different places on that pile, we can then make something that was already pretty impactful sound even bigger and be more impactful. I'll go to the Discord a lot and you know check ideas and people put the most insane stuff on there and I'm like, that is perfect. I want to do that next. And we always try to fill holes. Like we've got a bladed weapon, now I need a blunt weapon. Now this one is a little light, this one's a little heavy, and so we try to find things that we haven't done before and put something in that spot. It's actually uh, really exciting to think about how players and multiplayer are gonna do this, because you can actually set up groups to, to have your crusher go in and then have other people come up and clean up behind them. It's going to be fun to watch people explore the possibilities and how they can approach different tactical situations with the zombie. They're all a lot of fun, they feel great, and it's, it's such a different style that each one is just going to have great value. So. All right, so uh, <laughs> there's our introduction to heavy weapons. Ow, that, that kind of looks like we know what we're doing. Yeah, isn't that weird? It's like it's like it was made by professionals instead of a bunch <laughs> of like weirdos in a corner of the audio room. Uh, but so Brant's got the game up and running. So let's let's get over there real quick. And uh, so 
I've set up a community, we've got nine people, and each of them has got a different heavy weapon. And so I figured maybe we could just kind of go out, show each of these weapons in action, talk about where they came from. Uh, and so what, uh, actually, oh wait, yeah, well, tell me about this one. This one? Yeah, this one right here, what do we got? Looks like a sledgehammer, that's a sledgehammer. So that's your standard issue, just giant sledgehammer. Um, Our camera doesn't even let us see I'll the whole thing. Get, I'll try and get in the light here. Oh, there, there we go. go. Yeah. I wonder who that is. <laughs> Scarproof. Oh, does that say Scarproof on it? Is Scar out there today? Because look, I wonder where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what else are we showing here? Each player has... Oh, yeah. Do you want to open up the community screen? Yes, I do. Let's do that. Oh, not that screen. There we go. Okay, yeah. So if you look through all of these people, you can oh see they've all got new outfits on. Um, these are the outfits. If you bought Daybreak, Heartland, or the Ultimate Edition uh, prior to Juggernaut coming out, these are the outfits uh, that you're going to get. Uh, in addition, you'll also get um, a, a big pile of prestige uh, as a thank you from us uh, for having bought those uh, back in the day, uh, back when they cost money. And uh, But then you also <laughs> you're also going to get... Uh, these jackets for your characters. So there's one for Daybreak, there's one for Heartland, and there's one for the Ultimate Edition. And actually, if you scoot over a little bit more to the right, if you got the Ultimate Edition, you also get this hat. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, so who's this character? Do you guys want to tell me about this character on the back of the jacket? That's Shaggy Jack. That's Shaggy Jack. Who's Shaggy Jack? I've never heard of Shaggy Jack. I think maybe we're just going to have to wait and see who Shaggy Jack is. Maybe, a, do we want to save that until the next uh, stream? A very important uh, character, well, not character, but a very important part of the new map. Okay, well then, we, we will stay away from that, but uh, let you guys that enjoy that jacket. Though. One thing, by the way, while he's uh, sort of demoing the clothes, we should point out the fact that we are actually going to be giving away um, a free uh, six-month membership to Game Pass at the end of this stream. So if you're interested in getting... Uh, so Because people who have Game Pass are going to be able to play the full Juggernaut Edition at no additional charge. And so if you want to be in on that, uh, type exclamation point enter into the chat, uh, presuming you're watching live right now. If you're watching this on like YouTube or Twitch later on... Um, you know, that won't it's over. Me. Yeah, but type exclamation point enter, and uh, there'll be a random drawing at about uh, 3.45 Pacific time, which is, you know, like a little less than 40 minutes from now, and uh, you might get six months of Game Pass. So it looks like everybody's entering, which is great. Uh, so that said, I'll remind you guys about that a few more times, especially for folks who come in late. But uh, yeah, so we've got this entire crew of people here, and each one of them has got a different weapon for us to show off. I want that as a shirt. Yeah, just for just kill, in real kill, life. Kill, 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 kill. <laughs> I, I wonder Good if stuff. I wonder if uh, if Susan, our costume artist, like if teachers worried about her in school, like if this is what she was drawing on her notebooks. <laughs> well, regardless, I'm glad she did. Yeah, no, it's really good. It's really good. Okay, right. so we've got a sled. Let's let's go kill some zombies with a sledgehammer. Okay, so. One thing, uh, during that video, you noticed I talked a lot about multiplayer and um, and how this is going to affect that. Yeah. Uh, because these are heavy weapons, um, emphasis on heavy, mm -hmm. they take a lot of stamina. Yeah. So you're not going to be mashing that, that button. This is a very, uh, this is a more nuanced attack style or fighting style. Um, taking on one zombie... Really no problem, um, but you can see how much longer those uh, the, each one of those hits takes. And but every time I swing, um, we're looking at a, a fairly significant hit to your stamina. And and this character has the powerhouse uh, skill, which means that they're actually reducing the uh, the the amount of stamina taken for each hit. So if you're if you are a brand new character who has very few stars, uh, swinging a weapon like this is is expensive, which means you have to really think about your timing. You got to make sure that you're actually near all the zombies you want to hit. You take a big swing, knock them all down, and then you can go around cleaning them up. But uh, but if you for instance hit only one zombie and there's two others, that backswing is going to take you a while to recover from, and so you can't just do whatever you want. You have to be a really thoughtful, strategic kind of player to use these heavy weapons. Yeah, absolutely. And in groups, um, you don't. I don't think you want everybody to be running heavy, <laughs> like because the this this like this girl, if she runs into a horde, she's just going to stand up there and start knocking bodies down. But you'll you're going to need a cleanup crew. Yeah, right? somebody to run around and stabby stabby when they're on the but ground. You can take out three or four zombies at once. Yeah. 
So you'll notice that, uh, by the way, I started this in standard zone at the very beginning of the game, so I just realized we might not have a whole lot of zombies to fight uh, this early on. Uh, we, maybe we can, um, I mean, if it starts to be a problem, we can probably turn off the, 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 uh, the game video and, and cheat ourselves a little bit yeah. deeper into the difficulty one, curve. One thing that... Um, Do you have firecrackers? Boom! <laughs> one thing that uh, Powerhouse gives me is um, this wind-up. Bam! Oh, oh see, so you can interrupt it. it. Yeah. So this is this is problem. If I get overwhelmed with a lot of standing zombies, then I'm in trouble. You'll notice there that the finisher, with multiple zombies around you, the finisher is different. Uh, she does an area of effect. Like yeah. A big swing that'll knock out that'll knock some of the other zombies away from you if there's others there. Yeah. Um, Even just rewinding that moment, you can see like when you only had one zombie to deal with, she does you just a, did this vertical stab. Yeah. But if she's got multiple zombies, then she does a swing and a hit, and so that kind of keeps her a little bit safer uh, during that during the finishing move. One thing people might also notice is you're triggering those finishers differently uh, than you traditionally did. You're not doing the special like the grab and attack move that's anymore. Right. Um, we changed the controls on that. We did change the controls, and we we have, I mean, so... The old way still works. Y yeah, you can always go back to the old way, but we've been playing with this new control scheme for a while, and it's... I love it. I'm used to it now. Um, and it's a one-button finisher, so you don't have to right trigger Y or do anything like that. Yeah. Let's see what happens when uh, when I get in real trouble here. <laughs> you did, like, the big charts of attack. I did. Yeah. This, so, is, this is going to be Fall Down's move here, I think. Just beating with a huge hammer. <laughs> but since I don't have my uh, headphones on, I'm going to have to be super. Okay, Futter came in really briefly and had a question. So Futter wants to know: um, Is there going to be a special heavy weapon skill, or are heavy weapons going to be using the striking skill or the swordplay skill or one of the existing mm. skills? So yes, it is going to be using one of the existing skills, but it's not either of those. It's Powerhouse. Uh, so Powerhouse, which is, it's not on the combat, the, the fighting track, it's on the cardio track. And basically the original plan from before we released State of Decay 2 was for Powerhouse to be for heavy weapons. Uh, we had planned to do three different classes of weapons just like the original game is uh, had, and we cut, the, cut it for time. You know, we, we weren't able to get them all into the game. And so we wanted heavy weapons to be in this game from the beginning. And so the Powerhouse skill has been sitting there. We gave it other abilities. But it's been sitting there waiting for heavy weapons to arrive for a really long time. And so that's, so all of these characters that you're seeing here today have Powerhouse, which means they've got all of the, uh, you know, they've got the charged up ability um, unlocked, the, you know, that charged mm -hmm. attack unlocked. And they're also particularly effective because they, they reduce the, uh, the stamina cost of, uh, you know, of, of each swing, which is really important for using heavy weapons. All right. So I will run back to base and uh, switch to one of our others, and we'll just do a quick roundup of the the variety of weapons that Mark has 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 enthusiastically provided for us. <laughs> so Hatred E five 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 asks, if I already own the game and all the DLC, will I still need to buy the Juggernaut edition? No, no. you won't. <laughs> it's a, it's a free update, and so basically, if you already own. Any, if you're able to play State of Decay 2 today, which means if you've got it on Game Pass or if you've bought any version of the game, the entire Juggernaut edition, including all of the past DLC of the game, are all going to be available to you on March 13th with no additional charge. You don't have to pay any additional money. Now, if you did buy the Ultimate Edition or Daybreak or Heartland, um, then, you know, uh, yeah, <laughs> Brad's got this up. You can see these outfits on these characters. You're going to get, for each of those DLCs, uh, you'll get uh, 3,000 prestige, or 1,000 for the Ultimate Edition, and you'll get these outfits. There's yep. one of these for Daybreak, one of these for Heartland, and an outfit and hat for the Ultimate Edition. So... Lots of stuff uh, so that we can basically say thank you to you folks who supported us back before we got to this point where we were able to release a Juggernaut edition um, with no additional charge for everybody. Uh, those of you who supported us back then, we wanted to give you a big thank you. So. Yeah. Will your saves the survivors carry over? Oh, oh, will they carry over? Yes. So this is like any other update. Your saved games uh, are going to be intact. They're just destructive. Yeah, it's just like every other update we've done from update you know one all the way through update fifteen or however fourteen, however many we're up to now. Uh, it's just like all of those. Your game, your save game works exactly the same way it was. There's just a new map that you can move to and some new toys to play with. For those who bought it on disc. It still works for those on disc, just like any patch. You know, whenever you buy a game on disc, patches still apply to you, and this is the same. This will arrive like a patch. 
Um, there won't be a new disc version of, of, of Juggernaut Edition out. Uh, this is, it's a digital only update. So if you want to buy a disc version of State of Decay 2, you can probably still find the original State of Decay 2 disc release out there. And then when you bring it home, it'll be like, hey, there's an update for this game. It'll get updated, and then you'll have the Juggernaut Edition. So to answer the burning question that is yes. flying across our screen and from three different streams, yes. when does this come out? March 13th. <laughs> March Friday the 13th, to help you remember. Right. Coming up soon. There you go. So yeah, it's less than a month away. Um, so we're still, you know, we're, we're still basically getting it through sort of the very last steps to prepare it uh, to release. But uh, we're able to play it here because, you know, all this stuff really works. So what do you, what's this weapon that this guy's got? Yep, what's this, Mark? That is a splitting maul used for splitting pieces of wood. Yeah. This is Anybody one of my favorite tools in real life. Anybody who's <laughs> cut down a tree in their backyard, this is the one, this is the thing you want to get those rounds split yeah. up. You don't actually have to be particularly strong to feel like an incredible badass swinging one of these. This is like one of, this is my favorite tool in real life because... The weapon does the work. Yeah, you can just, you basically just set a, yeah, you set a stump, you know, or whatever, like a, a big chunk of log on your driveway and you just, you just, yeah, you, you feel like Captain America or something. It's great. Until the Can't next do it with day your hands, when but. you don't. Right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. The thing is, it has an incredibly heavy head and yeah, it just splits right through a skull. Not that I've tried that in real life. So, we'll just run through them quickly here. Next yeah. is Chloe. What does she Chloe? have? And what she's done, we'll see it. Oh! She's got big the shovel. We should go take that out for a spin, All just right. because uh, of the sound. Let's spin with the shovel here. Um, maybe out front. Like I said in the video, I was waiting for the sound to come out. And just, yeah. It should actually <laughs> attract more zombies, too, because the sound is so awesome. I just left one of our brand new bases. All of our bases were rebuilt from scratch, so they're all new and different. Yeah, so this one is loosely based on existing warehouses, but each of our warehouses that exist in the game already are different, and this one is even more different than those. Yep. Every base is bespoke. We did not recycle any of those. So um, I'm just going to honk the horn here a little bit. There you go. Maybe. Uh, Maybe drive down a little bit to see what we can find. Otherwise, I'm going to cheat like a dirty cheater. <laughs> Just tell me to get it, you know. Tell me when you're going to do that. Hey, guys, follow me. There's some cool stuff over here. Honk, 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 honk. Let's get some more. There we go. Yeah. We're there getting, we go. We're getting some zams. <laughs> Hi. Let's wait for your friends to catch up. Where'd they go? They're yeah. back here. They're slow. Mad Max 71 oh, wants yeah, to know... Uh, if we're going to be at PAX East. And the, and the answer is, we have a very small presence there. Uh, we'll be at the Mixer with Brent will be there, Aaron well, will be there. Well, I mean, there. depending on how you want to describe me, I am large. <laughs> <laughs> but number of personnel is going to be minuscule. But yeah, if you want to... Oh, uh, I love that. There you go. If you want to bump into a couple of us, uh, not, me, not me or Mark, but uh, if you want to bump into a couple of us, yeah, go to the Mixer booth. Let's get some of that stamina back. you gotta, you got to manage your stamina. I've learned that using uh, the energy drink along with this character Bomb. with the heavy weapons is great. Suck down one of those when you see a bunch of bad guys coming in, you're good to go. Oh! See, this is where it's going to get a little bit crazy if I run out of stamina. <laughs> but that's what it's for. <laughs> nice. You took out all those dudes. But now you've got to run around and, and do you the cleanup. See with, my, with the air. Oh, oh. You <laughs> gave me really good stats here. <laughs> yeah, these, uh, these are pretty good characters. <laughs> I love it when they stumble and fall. It's one of my favorite animations in the game. So you can see even... Squish! Oh, yeah! I love that. You push him against the car, and it's just the end. So, so you notice, even though we do have these prompted finishers now, the old way of doing finishers, the whole grapple system, it's still there. Uh, we didn't remove anything. We just added new options. All right. Oh, uh, Keith wants to know, uh, what about people who bought the Independence uh, Pack? So, yeah, I didn't mention that one before because it's not associated with a costume, with an outfit. Uh, but the way that the Independence Pack works now, we didn't want people who um, got the Independence Pack as part of Juggernaut to just suddenly immediately be distracted by it as soon as they started their very first game. 
So we've set it up so that you, uh, if you don't own the Independence Pack already and you're playing the Juggernaut Edition, you'll unlock it when you defeat all the Plague Hearts on a map. So if that's your very first map or if you move maps a couple of times, whatever, whenever you manage to clear a map of Plague Hearts, that's when we give you the Independence Pack for the first time. So, you know, so you can't just use a barrage of, you know, Pyro Launcher to kill every Plague Heart from the very beginning. You've got to actually legit take out some Plague Hearts first before you get it. Uh, but if you bought the Independence Pack, you don't have to do that. You just you have it, you know, from from day one, just just like before. I don't know if you can read that on there. It's what from a company say? called Michigander. Michigander. <laughs> Michigander. That sounds familiar. So that style axe is a Michigan style axe with the two head, the two double bit on there. Yeah. And so shout out to our good buddy Michigander. There he is. Boom, Michigander. Uh -huh. <laughs> Did, did Michigander just find out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, yeah, great supporter of the show. Long time support the show. Long time supporter of the game. <laughs> also the show. But uh, let's go out and, and see if we can't... Uh, Bring down the boom. So while we're headed out, just a quick reminder, folks. Um, if you haven't entered yet, we do have a giveaway going on. If you hit exclamation point enter uh, in the chat, you'll be entered uh, for a chance, just one chance per person, um, to potentially win uh, six months free of Game Pass. So if you're interested in that, definitely type uh, exclamation point enter into the chat. Again, it's only one entry per person, so spamming it multiple times is not going to help you. But uh, yeah, do that. At, uh, let's see, it's like 25 minutes from now, we'll do, we'll do the drawing and, uh, and we'll give one away. Noise. Are there zombies? Rose, I'm looking. <laughs> Remember to hit shift when you're pressing the one key. All right, here we go. Yeah, one enter will not do it for you. Wow, all that noise. Is there anything on this? Oh, perfect, all right. There you go. Oh, you hit infestation? Going. Nice. I know where I'm going. Oh, that person had a really hard time recycling today. Look at that. <laughs> well, they threw something in that they wanted to <laughs> They back. wanted to get they back really out, right? No, yeah. no, not that. <laughs> Give it back. Like, did oh. they did they just like were they scavenging in there and then they got disemboweled by a zombie while they were halfway I mean, in? That's that's the user story, right? You <laughs> guys get to choose what happened to that person. <laughs> Someone was hiding in there, turned into a zombie. The other person mm -hmm. then tried to get in to grab some stuff. Rawr. Chomp. So Rusuki wants to know: Will the old maps ever be overhauled in the future? Uh, that is one idea we've talked about. Certainly, that's not what we did with this update. This update is we put all of our effort into making this this single brand new map. So, but oh wait, caveat. Oh, that's true. They haven't been physically changed, but some of the some of the improvements that we made in this, and and Mark and I'll talk about it a little bit. But I think we're probably going to go over a little bit in another stream. Yeah. Um, Mark did some amazing material work. You'll notice uh, the roads. If I'll, I'll take you into that in a second, mm -hmm. but um, there's been improvements that have been backdated into the maps. We haven't we haven't gone into each one specifically to hand tool these, but we did sort of a broad strokes broad strokes um, improvement to things like some of the um, the foliage, the foliage, the yeah. roads, and each one of the new each one of the old maps got a complete overhaul on the lighting, and each one is different, and you'll be able to identify which map you're on just by the different mood and lighting. It's absolutely fantastic. And the windows. You can actually see the windows from inside now. It's kind yeah. of nice. <laughs> so yeah, so we didn't change anything about the gameplay in the maps, uh, which is sort of what, where my head goes immediately when you ask a question like that, but, but Brand is right. that There's a lot of differences in terms of the visuals, uh, lots of upgrades to the appearance of the maps, and uh, we hope you'll enjoy it. So now, we're, yeah. I'm trying to um, get all these guys to come out. Oh, I think uh, you've are. got a gun you can fire. Unless, was this one of the, I gave suppressed weapons to a few. Oh, that'll get them coming. <laughs> Squish. Need some firecrackers. I'm gonna, boom. Hello, whack. You're not gonna. <laughs> I just, I love how those guys go so flying. <laughs> whack. Oh, I need to eat something. Come on. Quick, eat an apple real fast. On. Just like in real life. Look at that. Do it. Area. Oh. Oh, oh. Not so great. <laughs> Crap. So, but I just love how they go flying like that. Yeah, and I love how, how you can really see the trade-offs uh, of, of the way that the uh, the heavy weapons work, right? Because 
you know, because you hit a lot of guys with each hit, but if you run out of stamina, you can get into really deep trouble. So you have to be super careful. Coming, you may want to wait till he gets there so you can yeah. hit him too yeah, while he's taking up the last missing, time. Exactly. Missing um, your shot is a big deal if you're in, if you're in a lot of... <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. I there just, you go. This is just fun to play. I'm sorry you guys can't play this yet. So uh, Izzy Zig wants to know, will the interiors have better lighting during the day? You guys know the lighting stuff better than I do. So, I mean, it, it's... I think the answer is yes, because the whole lighting thing got a, re, got a, re, you know, a refresh to it. I mean, there's, there's still no electricity in the, in the greater world, right? Yeah. So um, you're still going to find a lot of spots that are dark, um, but... But that's kind of how it's supposed to be. Yeah. That, that's that's sort of state of decay. What we have done with lighting, and Matt will have to come in and explain more. Matt and um, Kevin will have to come in and explain a little bit more about um, the changes they've made. But we spent a lot of time trying to get lighting on this right. Um, and you'll notice we have haze now. We have um, fog banks and, and mists and stuff like that, which we were not able to do before. Uh, because of uh, performance, because things like mist is surprisingly uh, non-performant. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's really expensive to run. Um, All those little particles. Well, and the big the, the <laughs> simulating big, every drop of water. Yeah, every wa every drop of water. Yeah, it's just the the screen draw, right? Because yeah. you're covering a large screen, and I don't want to get into the technical crap, but. It's expensive. So. Yeah, but you can see, like, right here, it's like looking into the distance. There's a huge difference between the things that are close to you, which are very saturated, and things that are sort of, you know, washed out and faded in the back where they've got mist in the way. And it, it, it's a really, it really sort of sells the, the bigness of this map, the fact that you, you've got these mountains and valleys and yes. lots of verticality. It's a lot easier to really see th you, those differences with, you know, with the volumetric fog. You know when something's in the distance when something's really yep. close. Yep. Uh, just a surviving uh, has a question. Will the prestige cap still be uh, 9,999? And how will that work with the prestige bonuses that we're getting if we, if we bought uh, the original DLC and, and the Ultimate Edition? So the answer is we're going up a digit with the prestige limit. So when you get the Juggernaut Edition, not only will you get those bonuses if you bought you know, DLC or bought the Ultimate Edition, but everybody is getting five digits of prestige instead of four. So everybody's going to have room uh, to get the new bonuses. So right. now it'll be 99,000. 999. Uh, so that'll be the limit. Jump back into Daybreak and rack up those scores. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, Mark, what are we looking at here? So, that is, what are we calling this? The drivetrain? Yeah, the yeah, drivetrain, yeah. Drive shaft. Drive shaft, drive shaft. that's what it is. Um, so, yeah, it's in long lines of like looking in your garage, finding something that is big and heavy that you can smack some zombies with. Someone found this, decided this will do. And uh, so, yeah, you're basically taking a car part and swinging away. Uh, somebody had a question. What does kicking look like when you've got the, uh, uh, one of these things? So I think we need to go find an enemy to try it out. Because kicking just looks like jumping when there's no enemies. But, uh, but yeah, we had, there, is, there is a difference. So let's, let's, let's try that one out this time. All right. We've been, we've been slaughtering zombies pretty well. Through, uh... Um. So Whiny Bread 5 wants to know, can I transfer my save from Xbox One to Steam? Uh, so there's a few things that do carry over, uh, like your, your outfit unlocks, account level unlocks like that. Um, those, those cross over, but your save games do not. So uh, if, you have, if you bought the game from the Microsoft Store oh. or you're playing it on Xbox uh, and you decide that you want to go buy it on Steam, then, uh, then your save games will not carry over. You will be starting over uh, with, with, with new characters. And there, just, there wasn't a way uh, for us to make that work. So I can't do kick because you gave me like a super kick-ass character, right? I just do the pull and stomp. Oh, wait, when you hit A, is it? Oh, is it A? I think it's A oh, that talking about. So yeah, so grab, oh, grab a, a, a zombie that's standing up and do A on him. That's not a zombie who's standing up. There's star proof. <laughs> Uh, we'll find somebody here. I've I've been playing um, this level in dread, and I would have been mobbed and murdered by now. Yeah. Playing like this. Hey, I, there's a zombie. I wasn't Hi. sure uh, which which difficulty zone to put you in. Uh, uh, no, for, for we, it would have been a very short stream. <laughs> Hi. 
Hey, we we really do need to bring in Fall Down. Just to oh, play here it game. is. Oh, look at this. Here That's the kick. This so is the kick. It's not a kick anymore. It's Me. a shove. So, so the thing that I use that for is when I'm fighting a feral with a heavy weapon, you and, uh, and, I, and I know I'm only going to get a moment to do a little bit of damage to it because it might attack me at any second, rather than charging up a huge swing, I'll just do that little pop in the face and, uh, and get what, whatever damage I can in on the feral. And only when I know I've just dodged him and he's still in his recovery will I actually charge up a full hit on the guy. It's, just, it's called a little how she going. Yeah, exactly. It's almost a hockey move there. Stick <laughs> check. Let's see how, um, how this guy deals with it. Hi. There you go. Boom. Don't, don't mess with me. And then, oh, no, no, oh, smashed it. Oh, there's no, there's some zombies up here. Mm -hmm. Is there Crocs? Yeah, so if you're getting, if you're getting overwhelmed, you can just go, hey, back up, and <laughs> whack. Yeah, because it puts them into nice little sort of stagger recovery mode, and then... Does that take less stamina? Uh, yeah, the pop takes less stamina than a normal hit. Yep. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just it's fun. Time. It's just fun to do. <laughs> okay, so uh, it looks like we were having trouble with the giveaway uh, system, whatever, on, on YouTube. And so a lot of folks were not getting acknowledged when they entered uh, the giveaway. So if you're on YouTube specifically, and you want to be entered for those six months of, of free Game Pass, uh, Try the entry again. Hit exclamation point, enter in the chat. Try it again. You, it should all be working properly now. And, uh, you, and you should fairly get entered into the, into the we giveaway. don't want you... To miss out just because you happen out. to be on YouTube, right? Hey, I meant to do that. You did. Watch this. Huh! Skateboard! So... Uh, Brian is reminding us, by the way, and, and this is a thing that I was mentioning before. If you feel like we're, you want to see more zombies, we could... Uh, take the Elgato off for a second and you could cheat everybody up to hero level. We could, we could do it. Yeah, we could do a, a cheater. I mean, people like to see our characters die too. So. That is true. So do you want me to get off, get this thing off? And we um, can do some Q&A while we're... Uh, we've actually got some frequently asked questions we could jump over to if you wanted to do some cheating. Well, let's, let's finish out checking out the... We'll do a quick run through of the weapons. Here's the okay. one that Mark was talking about earlier in the uh, video. Oh yeah, the hog splitter. So this is one of my personal favorites. My my grandpa actually uh, left one of these in his garage, and we did not know what it was. Found out what it was, and it was way more awesome than I could possibly have imagined. It's a hog splitter, <laughs> and I don't think I have to really describe what that is. The yeah. name pretty much speaks for itself. It's a giant cleaver. With moink. Moink? <laughs> Scratched into it. What's moink? What's a moink? moink? It's a moo and an oink. Oh, of course! It's a moink. What was I thinking? <laughs> yeah, I mean... So, I can imagine that with the mask I mean, and how, the outfit. I mean, how did you get those two heads in half so that you could That's put what them you in? Use. Probably with a hog splitter. That's yes. true, yeah. This is my second favorite weapon that you've made. So that was the apron. You're just going to look like... The zombies will be afraid of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they'll just stop. They're right. like, this nah, is nah. Yeah, this is basically made no, for uh, swine and bovine guy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. All right. We're, we're upping the pace here so we can get to all of these. Wake up. No sleeping. That's right. No sleeping on the job. You got heavy weapons. There's my there favorite. There we go. <laughs> so okay. what is this? Actually, take me off. I'm going to reset the time of day so we're not fighting the darkness here. Okay, sure. Let me... Uh, which one are we going to? This one. Right here. Okay. We don't. We don't need to have our crazy name tags. Let's just do that. What is my name on this one? Uh, oh, oh, what was your 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 uh, makes crazy weapons? Ah. That's what you are. Okay. So yeah, and I am watches Mark <laughs> makes crazy weapons. Anyway, so um, okay, we're back. Oh, you're ready to go? Okay, yep. cool. Then I won't change the subject. We'll. Um, that's not what I click. This is what I click. This is my favorite. The coffee can mace. Yes. <laughs> So out of control. Made with the old style, like Folgers coffee cans that yeah. everybody's grandma had. It's a Norma's Choice brand coffee. Norma's Choice. We all love Norma. <laughs> and so it is a coffee can filled with cement with bolts sticking out of it on the end of a stick. Yeah. 
Uh, King Cooter wants to know, uh, will heavy weapons make their way into Daybreak, and will the new skill tweaks be implemented into the contractors? So that's two separate questions. Number one, we did not make any, um, like, Daybreak weapons that were heavy weapons. So all the, you know, Daybreak has still got the same sort of pacing and equipment that it had before. But the skills that you get uh, all include, all the changes we made to Powerhouse to support this went into the Red Talon skills. So if you've got a Red Talon character um, in your normal game, like in your in your core game, then you can give them a heavy weapon um, and they and they can use it as well as anybody else. All right, I'm gonna keep going. We'll get through these and then run around. And then we'll run around, go nuts. Yes, yes, fine, we're not doing the mission. Come on, clean up, <laughs> clean up the bathroom. Broom is not a heavy weapon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what this is, was a fun one. What is that? Oh, I remember this one. So this is basically, huh, I've got a cabin, i got zombies, <laughs> what do I have that can take care of that problem? It right. is a ore with a, one of those there big old old-timey saw blades. Like from that Donald Duck cartoon? It. The, uh, never mind. Yes. That's my exposure to saw blades. The history of the Pacific Northwest, <laughs> the, you know, timber. Yeah, I, I, I got to know all that through a Donald Duck cartoon. Excellent. Um, yeah, my family had these hanging in our shed for 40 years. I mean, yeah. my, my family actually started a logging company up here in like the early 1900s. And um, so we had these all over the place. And this is just like the perfect Pacific Northwest <laughs> weapon. Um, yeah, this one's pretty brutal. Yes, paper. It's a sore. A sour, sour. <laughs> uh, the laser creeper wants to know if we're going to add any new uh, faces uh, to the Juggernaut edition. And no, the uh, the folks who make who make the faces and things like that were busy doing other things for the Juggernaut edition, uh, and so we didn't get any new faces implemented for for this. But that's not you know doesn't mean it's off the table. It just means it's not this update. Yeah, like all these awesome clothes and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Awesome clothes. The new lighting. Uh, that yeah, everything you know came from from the same set of artists, and they did some pretty amazing stuff for Juggernaut Edition. Moving on. Oh, oh, this is our last one. Yeah, an awesome Twitch dude. While you're looking at that, wants to know uh, how do we get the new heavy weapons? Loot them? Yes. Yes. Uh, that's basically it. Yeah, you go you go out. We've uh, they've been integrated into all of the loot tables for all four maps, um, and so you can find them anywhere. And that's it. Yeah, you just loot them. So what is this, Mark? Is that on Golden Shovel? Yep, on Golden Shovel. <laughs> so this is the shovel you get when you're breaking, uh, breaking Grand Ceremony. They give you that fancy shovel. They take one shovel, and then they put it on a rack somewhere That's on right. someone's yeah. office wall. They found one of those things, and now it's a big golden shovel. It's very sparkly. It's I, very like, I like the little dings on the back. It's like people have already been using it for a while. Yes. Yeah, they didn't, you know... You use what you got to. Yeah, you can't use yeah, something that's made out of you know gold or brass or whatever it is that's making it shiny. It's not going to really hold up necessarily against the zombies that long. I doubt they actually used real gold. There <laughs> yeah, may exactly. be some tarnish. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to show you the new roads because they are way different than the old roads. Yeah. You notice they just look... Better. It's like the edges of the roads are really nice. The you actually, why am I telling you things? Yeah. Mark, tell us about these roads. Um, so the roads before were good. We wanted to make them better. Um, so we made a new material for them. They got cracks and um, they shine when you you know when you're going up in the sun. Yeah, and they look, um, yeah, they look they look like real roads. I mean, there's oil, the oil stains in sort of the middle of the road there. I mean. We, it's a big, uh, it's a, it's a big improvement. There's little bits of like uh, green coming through, like you see an old road. It's going to be all taken over by nature sooner or later. Um, Desert and, of, oh, and these ahead. roads are some of the improvements that that just backdated nicely into the other maps. Yeah, so it's not just, we're here in Providence Ridge, but Providence Ridge is not the only map that has these new roads. All four, uh, they all, you know, I think Rumble Valley got them too, didn't it? Yeah, it's all... Yeah, it's just everywhere. So yeah, yeah. all of the maps. Um, Desert 06 is like, wait a minute, didn't Brent hate golden weapons? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. This is, a, this is a special, I mean, there's a reason this is gold because it was ceremonial, and we've decided to pull it off the wall. 
uh, one of the nice details that I love about that is um, it's West, it has, it's Weston branded, yes. branded by Weston. And oh, those yeah. of you who played Lifeline um, and who have listened to the radio some the, and stuff, some of the yeah. broadcasts, um, the Westons are playing a very big part in the greater zombie world. Um, and uh, oh, I'm in an area that we haven't really. I don't think we've shown this yet. Mm. This is uh, <laughs> this is one of the um, growing pains of, uh, of that we're running into a lot around here. Small rural communities um, being gentrified because people making lots of money need want lots of land and big huge houses, and this is one of those areas that's suffering from that. Um, you have, you know, your small town is giving way to um, new construction and cookie cutter houses and things like that. So um, this is one of those areas that's got a lot of new props and things that we uh, that we built over the last few months. So Mr. Legendary wants to know, um, we're losing two Bounty Proker packs in March. With the update, does that mean that there's two new packs coming? Uh, no, what we're doing is sort of uh, constraining the window that you get into the packs uh, at any given uh, time. So there's just going to be fewer packs available at a time. So instead of being overwhelmed by you know the maximum number of packs, you'll have small uh, a smaller group of them at any at any given time. But then over time, we're going to keep cycling them in and out. Uh, so rather than just being sort of overwhelmed by just this huge smorgasbord of uh, of bounties, we figure we'll give you a few to focus on uh, at once, and then and then keep cycling them in and out to to give you new things to look at. Um, that was also, you know, let's be transparent. It's also a lot easier for us to display six at a time, or whatever our number is. Yeah, the number's lower than that now. It might be five. I think. I think. Yeah, I think it might even be three or four. So. Um, it's just more manageable on our end too. Yeah, to show them. Um, let's see here. So, oh, ASRB Gaming said, "Did military zombies get a helmet change? I swear, I saw one with a full face mask." Uh, so I think there are oh, some missed. there are some rarer military zombies. Uh, I think that the SW there's some SWAT zombies that have different helmets, and you don't see them all that often. And so that that might be what you saw. I don't actually know what you saw. Uh, folks are asking, by the way, are these um, these heavy weapons going to break? And I think the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah, oh, they're yeah. normal weapons. They'll, they'll, well done. They're, they'll wear down, just like all of them. We don't want you to be, um, you know, Conan. Oh, that's brutal. <laughs> Nobody wants to be going on. Crush your enemies. See them driven before you. Sorry. So I think, by the, the way, for anyone who joined us late, <laughs> this might be your last chance to enter into uh, the drawing that we're going to do for six months free of Game Pass, uh, which is one way that you can get access to the Juggernaut Edition is with Game Pass. So hit exclamation point enter uh, if you want to sort of get in at the very last minute, because I think very soon, just a couple of minutes, uh, we're going we're gonna to be choosing our winner. Woohoo! I am in the right car for this. <laughs> I better find some fuel. Is there any fuel sitting right there? No! <laughs> Darn it! All right, we'll 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 go elsewhere. I'll give you an idea of some of the... Um, took a, we took great care in, in, in creating um, some really nice views this time as well. I mean, not that we didn't before. But this one, our points of interest were, uh, were um, a lot more deliberate and very focused. Um, so you'll be able to to see there's some spots in the map where you can see a ridiculous amount like yeah uh, i'm not going to show you i'm not going to drive all the way down there but um oh look at that sawdust days those for those <laughs> of you who grew up or spent any time in small towns um you know they uh they tried to come up with reasons to celebrate and this is sawdust days courtesy of mark <laughs> thank you mark for creating um you are our logo and sign yes. and everything guy it's there's great. A, there's there's a secret history behind the beaver too um <laughs> that goes back t more than 20 years that now. particular character has made it in more than one game yeah wow snuck in a corner here and yes yeah uh, Neon Lights wants to know, are there going to be any new uh, facility mods? Uh, so no, I don't think there's any new facility mods, but uh, next week when we do our full tour of, of Providence Ridge, uh, we're going to show you all the bases, and you'll see that there actually are a lot of new uh, built-in facilities at those bases that you haven't seen before. So that, that's sort of how the base system got bigger this time around. It wasn't with facility mods, it was with brand new bases that have their own built-ins.
Some of you will notice that um, I went in and removed some of the um, chairs and tables in here because it made it really hard to play in spaces like this. So there's been, we've tried to do quality of life improvements in as many places as we could. Yeah. Oh, hello. So um, we're getting towards uh, probably the end of the giveaway. So we'll have a winner probably pretty soon. While we're waiting for that, uh, we've actually collected some frequently asked questions that we've been getting a lot ever since, because we announced the, uh, the Juggernaut edition on Friday, I believe. Uh, and so we've had a few days to sort of get a sense of what people are asking about it. Uh, so I've got a list of frequently asked questions here that I just kind of wanted to go through, because I'm sure that a lot of these, in fact, a few of them I think have probably already been asked on the stream, but a lot of these might be occurring to you folks, and so we want to get the answers out there. Uh, number one, will my game from the Microsoft Store transfer over to Steam? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, mm, yeah. the, the Steam version, it's from a different store, and you would, if you wanted to have both, you would have to buy them separately. Um, but, you know, you've already got it. I mean, if you've bought it on Xbox, that means you've got a PC version of it already. But, uh, you know, those kinds of decisions are up to you, but that's, that's kind of how it has to work. Oh, no, just when I was going to throw something. <laughs> so this one already came up on the stream, but will there be a physical copy version? Like, will there be, a, like, a disc version of the Dug Juggernaut Edition? Um, there won't. Uh, there are already uh, disc versions of State of Decay 2 out there, and if somebody already has a, a, a disc version of State of Decay 2, it will... Are you on fire? Yes. It will update to the Juggernaut Edition um, automatically. So you, you could buy any disc copy of the game that's already out there in stores, and you'll get the Juggernaut Edition uh, that way. <laughs> I love this. Y'all, you see, my weapon's already... Uh... <laughs> It's already getting in trouble, yeah. Because it's because you because you use the the big fake gold whack. Those things were not made to actually get a lot of hard use. No. Um, will Steam be cross-platform? I will you be able to play with people who got the game from the Microsoft Store or, or who are playing on the Xbox? Yes. So we support cross-play between all versions of the game. There's nobody you should not be able to play with, yep. uh, no matter how you got the game. So 100% integration that way. Um, Will the update integrate with current communities or will I have to start over? Uh, this is basically just adding a new map to the list. Just like there's already three maps in the game and you can already move from map to map with the same community. Um, and so this is just adding a fourth map to that list. Nothing changes about your communities. Your save game is still the same way it always was. Just now there's a new map that you can either start a new community on or move one of your existing communities to. Um, and, and, you, and the way that movement, a lot of you have may, maybe have never moved to a new map before. Look at but, that big mountain up there. But it's just like moving bases. Uh, you get to keep all of your stuff. You get to keep all of your people. The only things you lose are any cars that you haven't parked in parking slots. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty much everything else comes with you. Speaking of cars, I might need one here pretty soon. <laughs> you running out of car? I'm running out of gas. Oh. Uh, let's see here. This, this map has the most elevation change that we've ever done, too. Yeah. So a lot of interesting stuff. Who's that? Who's that? I don't know. We're going to go past him. <laughs> So, um, what's the size of the download is another question we get a lot. We don't have final numbers for you right now. Um, you know, we're still finalizing the build that's going to go out. But uh, it really kind of depends on whether, you've, whether you're uh, downloading the whole game uh, from scratch or if you're doing an incremental uh, update. But uh, it's going to be a little bit larger than some of our other updates because it's bringing a whole map with it. But we've also put a lot of work over the past several months into making those updates uh, more economical and smaller. And so it's not actually going to be as huge as some of our original updates were back in the day when, when people would, you know, talk about how huge, how enormous they seem to be. Um, they're a lot smaller than they used to be. But this will be a big one based on, you know, the recent scale. And it's a new map. And it's a new map. So that's kind of why. So, yeah, we, <laughs> there's something you've never seen. I'm going to blast right by it. Uh, some folks ask... Uh, is this because, you know, this is in the Pacific Northwest. Are we adding rain and weather to the game? Um, no. We're getting, getting mist. <laughs> mist is your weather. Mist but, is as close as we can get. Yeah, sorry. Um, weather, weather was not, you know, was not the thing we were able to tackle this, this particular time. And uh, it's kind of, you know, it's one of those things where it, it's, it's just kind of been a tall order from the beginning. We've always had to say apologetically, no, uh, we don't think that weather, weather changes are likely to make it into the game. But... Uh, Camp Appreciate Winchester. your interest. <gasps> What's this? Oh, this seems like a new place. I think several of you might have seen this in yep, some of the existing videos. That's why I videos. drove up here because this is not this is not secret. Yeah, there are a couple Winchester. of uh, <laughs> there are a couple of places where uh, like I think in the next 
stream, we're going to be visiting all of the bases. So you'll be able to see this. This is one of the new bases. And in one of the streams after that, we'll be talking about the new, uh, the new player experience, which also takes place here. This is your sort of tiny base that you start with. So we'll get into more detail about the base that you can see in the background. Uh, itch, you can't really see it because I'm in the way. But whatever, that's fine. <laughs> um, so sometimes people will ask, what's the difference between the new map and the old maps? Um, and so we're going to go into that in fine detail mm -hmm. uh, next time. But uh, like I said, you know, this is a lot like the other maps. It fits in just you know it, it, into the group. It feels like it's the fourth map in a set. Um, it's got this one corner that we're up in right now that's dedicated to new players. It's a small northeastern corner on the map. It doesn't really dominate the terrain, but uh, but there is an area spe specifically designed for new players. So that makes this one stand out a little bit. Yep. It's got five bases, um, and we generally like this map the best. <laughs> I think like all, all of you folks, whenever you're playing I, it, it's yeah, like it does this feel like home. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a. Um, we're about 70 miles from basically this right now, and you go up, uh, and maybe even less. Highway two, basically, mm -hmm. heading over the mountains. This is what you see. I mean, so um, it's very near and dear to a lot of our hearts. Um, I mean, I went camping basically here when <laughs> oh, I was yeah. a kid. Uh, so we do have a winner for our giveaway. Yay, congrats. Uh, the winner is somebody who is on uh, YouTube named Kevin. Kevin with some symbols after his name. Uh, so congratulations, Kevin. You're going to get uh, a, a free six months of Game Pass. I believe that, uh, that, that our social media team is contacting you. If for some reason they can't get in contact with you, though, but you hear this, contact them at uh, social at undeadlabs.com and uh, they'll make sure that you get your prize. But congratulations. <laughs> oh. Lake Shallow. So Dan Likes to Play says, uh, my friend just got this game and had difficulty understanding the base layouts on the old maps. We sympathize. Um, the question is, uh, is this map geared towards newer players? Yes. So actually, anyone who is brand new to the game, who plays through the tutorial for the first time, after the tutorial is done, they will land in Providence Ridge. And there's a dedicated area in this map that's for them to learn the game for the very first time. It's got like, you know, one or two of each type of uh, area to, uh, each type of site to explore for resources. It's got a very small base that's entirely outdoors. So instead of getting lost in a split level house, uh, you can oh. actually just look around you and yeah, see all of your facilities. It's all on the same level, mm -hmm. so yeah. it's not. One level, open area, uh, much easier to understand. And then after you're more accustomed to the game, then you can start graduating to, to the more complicated bases. And then this map also has some of the biggest, most complicated bases we've ever done, too. Yes. It's, got, it's got a wider spectrum of bases. It actually yes. does have the biggest, most complicated bases we've we ever done. We learned some things. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's yeah. got the biggest base, and it's got the most complicated base. Not necessarily the same base. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've, I mean, we've had time to learn, time to you know, do some data mining about how people play our game and what they react to and we're as usual trying something a little new because yeah. um, how, how else are we going to learn unless we um, turn you guys into our guinea pigs. I love how nonchalantly you just did that. <laughs> uh, Jeffrey, I'm a professional. <laughs> yeah. So professional what? <laughs> a lot of people are asking is the Juggernaut Edition going to be free on Game Pass uh, the way that Heartland was and stuff and yes. So yep. if you already pay for Game Pass the Juggernaut Edition is no additional charge for you. It's part of the deal. Um, we often get the question, is the new map standalone like Heartland, or does it play like all the other maps? Uh, is, it, is it just a regular core map? And it's the second one. It is a regular core mm -hmm. map. It's not like Heartland. It's not separate and distinct from the, from the normal game. It is the normal game in a new setting. Yeah, and we've only shown you... Tiny pieces of it. This, this little area right here. There's a lot more to it. There's yeah, we, lots of stuff going on. Yeah, we, we kind of figure that, uh, that new players will spend a lot of time in the north, and then the south is where we've got some of our bigger, more complicated bases, and some of our, our denser urban areas and stuff like that. And so, not urban, urban like big city, but, you know, like the downtown small of a town. small town, yep. that kind of thing. Um, and so that's where that stuff is, and so we'll, we'll save that maybe until the next stream. A lot of folks uh, ask, will Windows 7 be supported on Steam? So officially, uh, that's lower than our min spec, so we're not formally supporting it. Um, we have tried the game out in Win 7, and it does seem to, to, to run, but we're not devoting um, you know, like QA, re QA resources to finding all the problems with it or anything like that. So we're not formally supporting it, but if you have Win 7, it might work. 
Uh, we're just, <laughs> we're just yeah. not, we're not gonna, say, we're not gonna promise that it works. And so, uh, if if uh, if you're not interested in taking that risk, then we understand. But uh, but yeah, that's kind of where we where we have to stand on that. Another of Mark's new buildings. I love that building. <laughs> Wait, can we really see? It? Let me let me. The move. Hobson Falls there train station. Yeah, make, keep keep it out of the upper left corner if you want people to be able to see it. Because there oh, we yeah. go. That is gorgeous. Look at that clock. That clock is fancy. Um, another big question we get is, uh, what do you get if you already bought all the DLCs? We mentioned this before, but just uh, to reiterate, um, if you bought Daybreak, then you get 3,000 prestige and a unique outfit. Um, if you bought Heartland, you get 3,000 prestige and a different unique outfit. If you bought the Ultimate Edition, not only do you get Daybreak uh, automatically, but uh, you get an additional 1,000 prestige plus a unique outfit and a unique hat. So if you buy the game modes, I never get tired of that. <laughs> if you bought the game modes, you get a lot of prestige. If you bought the ultimate, ultimate edition, you get a lot of clothes. Um, but that's sort of how it balances out. And then if you bought the independence pack, you just have unlimited access to it from the beginning instead of having to earn it, uh, like like new players will have to. Years after we've made this game, I still love playing it. <laughs> just mm. Giggling at the bodies flying I, through the air. I freaking love this. <laughs> No, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh. Squish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of folks ask us, how big is the new map? Um, and it's basically comparable. It's not big. It's, yeah. not big. It's, it's comparable to the other ones, right? It's the same yeah. sort of number of, of, of sort of big chunks of map that we usually, is our units of measure. Um, it's, it's, we haven't like done like some kind of analysis of the playable space, but it's yeah. in line with the other maps that you've played on. And there'll be plenty of familiar stuff, plenty of new stuff. Like, you know what a gas station is? Same gas stations. A yeah. lot of stores. He's like, oh, I know what that store is. But it's like, oh, what is that? I've never seen that before. Yeah, it's a nice mix where it's like the, the familiarity. Like, you know you know what the pharmacy looks like and Here's stuff like that. Here's something new. We what actually put a sign on the clinic instead of just having a building sitting there. <laughs> there you go. Upgrades. Nice. Well done. <laughs> um so you already answered this question, Brant. The question was, uh, are the graphics improved on all the maps or just the new one? Uh, any of the, any of the, we've already talked about some of this, but things like the roads that uh, Mark did the new material for. The foliage. Uh, the foliage um, and lighting. Each one of the maps. Uh, Lighting's the biggest. Yeah, each yeah. one of the old maps got a full pass by um, Kevin Pun and Matt Heinegger. They went crazy and um, really neat stuff going on in the other maps. Um, there's also been um, a lot of optimizations that will affect the old maps, but we didn't we didn't sit down and explicitly like rework any of the old maps. Yeah. It's it's something we are talking about looking into. We're not making, you know, we're not announcing any intentions at this point, but uh, there's a lot of stuff on the table uh, about the um, pre-existing maps. Uh, the real P1 wants to know uh, with if people are moving to the new map, will they lose everything? Uh, he says, you know, I, I've actually already answered that question for him personally. He acknowledges that, but he wants to make sure that everyone gets the answer. And yeah, so if you've never moved, moved maps before, I realize that might seem scary, but really moving maps is just like moving bases. Um, you keep all of your stuff, you keep all of your facility ingredients, uh, you keep all your people, and any cars that you have parked um, in your parking slots will come with you too. Uh, so it's, it's just like moving... Uh, you know, moving within a map. It's just now you're on a new place and you're in a fully, you know, refreshed location. Quack. But oh no, it broke! We really no. wanted people, we really wanted people to feel uh, confident moving to new maps. We wanted them to be able to have the full experience, even with just one community, That's have the fun. full experience of this game. And so we wanted to make it as low impact as possible uh, to go around and, and, and experience all the maps. And then we have- Ceremonial shovel. I did, I broke the shovel. Disrespectful. We have one last question from the Frequently Asked Questions, which is great because we only have two minutes left in the stream. Uh, any new achievements? Uh, yes, there are seven new achievements uh, added to the game worth 150 gamer score, which will bring our total up to 2200. Uh, there's also going to be achievements on Steam. The full range of achievements are also going to be happening on Steam. Though, uh, if, you, if you for some reason decided you wanted to buy it on both platforms, you have to earn the achievements separately on both, I believe. Um, because they're just different systems. But, uh, so one of them is going to be obvious. We've already got um, three achievements for moving to each of the other maps. There's a fourth achievement now for moving to the fourth map. Um, and there's a few associated with the Bounty Broker. And there's a couple of weird ones that have to do with outfits. Uh, I'll let you guys discover those a little bit later, but they are some of my favorite achievements we've ever worked on. And uh, <laughs> I, 
like when we started writing these up, uh, there's some pretty good ideas out there. And I was like, uh, one of them, one of them uh, came from QA, and I was like, that is the cleverest thing I've ever heard. But it seemed really unlikely because it was going to be complicated to implement. Um, but it turned out that uh, Jurgen liked it so much that he took the extra time to implement some of the weirdest achievements we've had. And uh, so we hope you enjoy them because uh, they're some of my favorites. But we're almost out of time. We've only got one Thanks minute swing. left. Whack! <laughs> I, you know, I can't think of a better way to end this stream than by just knocking a zombie completely head over heels. Yep. Oh, let's do oh, this. Oh, here's guy. another one. Hello, Mr. Enthusiasm. <laughs> See, and that was perfect timing right there. He was about to yeah. attack you, and you got that attack off at just I've the been, right moment. It takes a little while, but you guys will pick it up. Oh, and there's secrets. There's secrets in this Secret. map that we're not oh, ever yeah, that's gonna... true. We just showed you nine heavy weapons. There might be a different number of heavy weapons. There may be. Might be more for you to <laughs> what discover. What have we done? But it's four o'clock. So Boom. thank you so much, Brant, for giving us this tour and driving the game. Thank you, Mark, for coming in here and giving us the backstory and all this stuff. And especially, My pleasure. Especially for all the work you did on the map itself, on the buildings, on the roads, materials. This thing is gorgeous. I can't believe they paid me for this. Yeah. <laughs> Mark made all the heavy weapons. So. And, and also, thanks to With Alan. much input. Oh. And also thanks to Alan for setting us on fire. I really like our new uh, uh, stream art, which is great. And let's let's end with some beautiful stream art. I'm on fire. <sighs> crackle, so, crackle, crackle, crackle. Next crackle. week, next week we're gonna look at Providence Ridge. We get Doug Juno in here. He's uh, mm -hmm. one of the artists that built it. That's right. He's gonna give us a full on tour. We'll look at all the bases. It's gonna be great. Speaking of fire. <laughs>